Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say all praises to all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. In salutation to the elect, doing this work in truth and sincerity. Um, I uh, just uh, this is Instagram and uh, the man's page here is Malak Machiavelli. Uh, basically, I saw this picture, and uh, spirit spirit just hit me to do a video on it because you know it's very true according to Ecclesiastes thirteen and twenty three. It's a very very true statement, and you know, like it hit it on the nose, hit it right on the nose. So, without further ado, I'm going to go into it uh, because really, when you go back to Kendrick Lamar, you know. For all the brothers who do know, for you who don't know, Kendrick Lamar, of course he's a Jake, and he just came out with his newest album called uh, uh, Mad, and uh, he has a song in there called Ya, which, um, if you don't know, uh, the word Ya is a short form of saying Yahawa, okay, and in the same song, he calls himself an Israelite, you know, the lyrics go, don't call me black no more. I'm an Israelite, and he and then he references uh, Deuteronomy 28, and so um, basically, yeah, I'm pretty sure at the end of the song he has uh, uh, he has a certain camp. I don't know what camp it is, but he has a certain camp breaking down the scriptures and you know going through who Israel is and all that kind of stuff. So when this came out, man, a lot of people were in the up like not in the uproar, but a lot of those like. There was a lot of excitement among uh, among you Jakes when this guy finally told everybody that don't call me black no more, I'm an Israelite. Which, you know, whatever, you know, it's all cool that you know you're Israelite, but this thing is this this truth is deep, man. Okay, the word of the most high, Yahweh Shemi Shai is deep. It's deeper than knowing that you're an Israelite. You know, because the scriptures say, um, for many are called and for few are chosen. Okay, and it also says um, they that are of Israel are not of are not they that they that are of Israel are all not of Israel. Or all they that are of Israel are not all Israel. Roughly paraphrasing, because you got you, you. I mean, heck, Nate knows he's an Israelite. It doesn't mean doesn't mean he's going to be saved. Uh, it doesn't mean he's going to be saved from this nuclear destruction. Right, it goes deeper than that. It starts off with you knowing your Israelite, coming back to your heritage. And then you get into when you get deeper and you grow in this thing, because scriptures talk about growing in this thing. When you get deeper and you grow in this thing, and then you start to what? Keep the laws, love. Uh, keep the laws. You know, and then when you and you, you should be out there speaking, making videos. Your 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 uh your breakdown should get a little deeper because you're understanding a little more. You know what I'm saying? Certain things like that. But we've been, you know, starting beginning with, you know, Apostle Dahar on down. You know, the Apostles of Great Millstone and the Elders on down to, you know, us younger brothers doing this work. Even before YouTube, the came before the YouTube came out in 2007, they've been telling um, Israel that they were Israel, man. Been telling Israel they were Israel. And going, going, you know, going deep in the scriptures to prove that the North, the the, uh, the Negroes, Latinos, and North American Indians are the Israelites that the Bible speaks about. But most people, you know, didn't hear and and forbear it, which is fine. You know, I'm not I'm not here to make this video to complain that all you guys listen to him and never listen to us because that's we don't we're not looking for the intention of the masses. We're not looking for the for for a world for the world to approve us of what we're saying. We can care less here at G Great Millstone, man. Beginning with the apostles and elders on down, we can care less of what the world thinks. Heck, you know, we rather have the world hate us because the world the world is wicked, man. This this world is completely upside down. It's wicked, and we being righteous. Trying to keep the Most High and His Son's laws to the best of our abilities are going to be by default against the 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 world. 
so it's fine but I'm, I'm nearly just making this video to show you Jake's that the scriptures come to life every single day right in front of your eyes man you know so this is uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus uh, chapter 13 verse 23 it says when a rich man speaketh uh, ir irre many holdeth me uh, slake it says when a rich man speaketh ire men hold his tongue and look what he saith they extol it to the clouds but if a poor man speaketh they say what fellow is this and if he stub uh, stumble they will help to overthrow him and this is a true statement this is exactly what happened when uh, Kendrick Lamar came out with that song see, it's, oh, see the scriptures right there this is Ecclesiastes 13 23 when a rich man speaketh every man holdeth his tongue and look because it's true man when, when, when this man said that he's an Israelite and he's not back no more you had a lot of Negroes so-called Negroes Jakes who you know vibing with that but when we when when, when like I said again beginning with Apostle to heart and the apostles and elders on down to us younger brothers man doing this work you know when when they were out there you know preaching and, and, and saying and, and telling Israel that they're Israel most of them didn't listen and actually most of them also uh, and, the, and the most that didn't listen scoffed and laughed at the apostles and elders man laughed, laughed at all of us who are doing this work in truth and sincerity Right, but it's because we're considered poor in 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 this uh in this uh in this kingdom, right? But it's because we understand riches riches with money isn't everything. Now don't get me wrong, money is a defense. But that's that's what it is, right? You don't want an overabundance of it. The scriptures talk about balance, man. For me personally, man, I just need to get by each day, daily bread. You know, I live off my paycheck to paycheck. Two weeks to two weeks, two weeks to two weeks. Pay my bills, get my daily bread. You know, take care of other bills, the car, such and such, and you know, you move on, move, move on about your day. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't let my mind get. Uh, I try not to let my mind get uh, excited or into uh, uh, the state of wanting money. Because the scriptures, I'm about to read it too. I'm about to read it before I skip ahead here. But it says, Ecclesiastes 13, 23. When a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue, and look what he saith. They extol it to the clouds. And I remember when, when Kendrick Lamar came out with this album, and he was speaking about this, man. It was all Israel knew about it, man. People were like, oh, see, look, Kendrick Lamar finally said he was an Israelite. Kendrick Lamar is an Israelite. He said, you know, that's all well and cool, you know, but... It's not something to get overly excited about because guess what? This man, Kendrick Lamar, with his fame and his fortune, he sold his soul for that. So don't forget, just because the man says one thing, don't forget that you don't forget that he sold his soul for 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 uh, his fame and fortune. Okay, so that means he sold his soul to the devil and it was a sellout. So he chose the devil over Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, and now that. He's, you know, in cahoots with the devil. Now he's, now he's gonna say, "Don't call me black one morning. I'm an Israelite." It's true. He's not going off, but doesn't mean this is a man who's gonna come out and. But trust me, this is not a man who's gonna come on the highways and byways, give up all his riches, and come up on the highways and byways and do the work. I highly doubt. I highly doubt he'll do that. And if he does, the hey, I stand corrected. You know, Prophet Yahweh, how much man try to bring? Bringing a man into the truth, but I highly doubt any of these guys who are, you know, who are living the lifestyle of having fifty plus million dollars in their bank account every day, eating that good food, wearing those good clothes, uh, you know, driving those nice cars, dealing with the beautiful, the nice women, nicest women. They're not going to give all that up. On top of that. These guys are paying half of the half of their family members and friends' uh, 
phone bills and 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 and, uh, and um, other bills, man. I think it was the uh, uh, um, Lamar Odom of the Lakers when he was playing on the Lakers. This man had was paying um, up to 50, 50 people's cell phone bills, man. So it just goes to show you, man. Like these guys are not going to give up what they have for the truth. They might slip in little things here and there, but that's like the boundary that was set from Esau to them. That's as far as they can go. Okay, he's not going to go further to say that he's an Israelite and to say, okay, and, and to actually give up his riches and come down and do the work. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah, he might have faith that he's an Israelite, which we all know he is. But, you know, the scriptures talk about show your faith by your works. He says he believes in the Lord, but how do you how do you prove that you believe in the Lord according to scriptures? Going out there and doing the work, man. Withstanding the elements. Withstanding the wiles of the devil when you're out there on the highways and byways. You know? Withstanding the scoffing. The spirit the spiritual battles out there, man. Okay, so it says again, when a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue, and look what he saith. They extol it to the clouds, but if a poor man speaketh, which we represent the poor men, right? Because like again, I said like, again, we're not when you see most when you see GMS, the sincere brother doing this work, beginning with the apostles on down, we're not wearing the nicest t shirts, the nicest pants, the nicest shoes. We're not, we don't, most of us don't have the nicest cars, man. We just have, like, for me, I just have a car to get me from point A to point B, man. Point A to point B. Okay? So, we're not looked upon as, you know, uh, high-renowned men. Okay? So, it says, but if the poor men speaketh, they say, what fellow is this? And that's, man, you jakes are wicked, man. That's exactly what, you know, how these two-thirds be. What fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. That's how this kingdom is set up. Where, hey, it's it's that scripture: great dignity, great dig, great dignity is set in folly. Oh, slack it! Uh, great folly is set in dignity, right? It's upside down. You have to be filthy rich with paper. They don't even have any value, but with paper. For you to be seen as anything. No one's looking right now. Which is fine. Because right now no one's looking for men of wisdom. Men who have the truth. Men of Yahweh Bashim Shai. But when all hell breaks loose. In America. Okay you got missiles flying. Uh, to and fro. The earth rocking. Babies being killed. Women being raped. Men men, men uh, robbing and killing each other. For a lack of bread. Like the scriptures speak about. Guess what? You're going to be looking for the men of the Lord. You're going to look. You're going to be looking for the men who are out there, who you called poor and bum, like bumites, and who you uh, 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 um, recruited as nothing. You guys thought of us as being scum of the earth. Because we were out there doing the work. Well, guess what? You're going to be looking for us in these last days, man. And guess what? It's going to be too late. Because right now, the scriptures talk about seek the Lord. When he may be found, implying that there's going to be a time where the Lord's not going to be, uh, the Lord's not going to be able to be found. See, this this kingdom's coming to an end real soon. The chip is around the corner, man. We're not going to be out here on the highways and byways for, for so much, for for so long. And as soon as we're out and we're done on the highways and byways, that's it, man. The elect have been sealed. Basically, that's where you say let the, you say let the games begin. Let the horror begin. Okay. Um, here, this is my last scripture here. It says, um, "This is First Timothy six and six, and it says, but God, but godliness with content, so yeah, but godliness with content is gain." Let's look, up, let's look up what that word content means. Because that's that's a true scripture, man. Godly, godliness with content is gain. Because most of these people... See, Esau has a system set up beautifully like for him. You know, because... You know, you put Jake... I mean, it all goes back to the curses. 
you know, pursuing doing Army Twenty Eight. But you put Jake in the in, in the ghettos, make him live a make him live a horrific life where everything's just hard and hell and everything like that. Everything's tough. And then you throw a couple money, you throw a couple dollars in his face, and all of a sudden you build that that uh, that hunger for money, that overbalanced hunger for money, which in in the in the long run, in the long run, um. Uh, enables that Jake, that Israelite, to do whatever it takes to get that kind of money because of the conditions he's been living in for so many years. Okay, so you know that's why it's so easy to to manipulate Israelites that are living in the ghettos, man. Because all that's all they see is is um, Deuteronomy twenty eight, for lack of a better term, it's all they see is Deuteronomy twenty eight. So when you wave a little little money, because in this in this kingdom, money is heaven. To the so-called white man. Alright, this is his paradise. So when you wave a little little bit of that heaven in, in Jake's face, you know, he'll do anything to get that, to get a piece of the pie, you know? So uh, so um so to speak. But the scripture says that but godliness, godliness with content is great gain. That is the true gain. And that word content. It says uh, here, a perfect condition of life in which no aid or support is needed, sufficiency sufficiency of the necessit the necessit the necessities of life. This is the this is the point here. It says a man a mind contended contended with its lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Contentment. It says a mind contended with its lot. Contentment. So, listen. When you come in this truth, like it, see, and it's so crazy. It's deep because Jake will complain, you know, about them going through hell, and they'll complain not so much about the hell they're going through, but they complain about why am I going through this, Lord? Why? 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 And then the Lord sets up, sets up, sets his men up to speak the truth and bring out the truth and to explain why you're going through the hell you're going through. To go back into the curses and to show you what we did in our past life and how we disobeyed the Most High and broke His laws. And now, because we've done such a thing, we have fell under curses. But Jake still won't listen to reasoning. So that just makes the Most High, you know, in the end of the day, Jake will pray for that and the Most High gives you that answer and you still won't listen. So guess what? The blood's wiped off our hands. But this, but this, but this says a mind contented with its lot, contentment, man. Because when you come in this truth, you're gonna start. When you first come in this truth, you lose everything. Okay, everything that you once had that was of the world, you lose it, man. And and then you, because you know, it's, it's it's all about being brainwashed and when I say brainwashed I mean I literally mean your wa your brain being washed out with all the filthiness that you that you were brought up with that was of the world and now your brain's being filled with all the righteousness of the scriptures of Yahweh Bashim Shai and you're growing you know you know uh, uh, destroying the old man and building the new man every day and at a time, and then when you get to a certain time, you know, you, you start to understand your lot in this thing. You start to understand your lot in the truth. Doesn't mean you can't grow. You stay in one place and you plateau. You grow within your lot, though. If your lot is to be a reader, okay, out there in the highways and byways, then you get, you get so good at reading that maybe you might jump up to be a speaker. Okay, or if you're a speaker, you get so good at speaking that you get that maybe uh, 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 hopefully down the line you get uh, you get so good at speaking that you can break down deeper uh, scriptures. You know what I'm saying? It's all about growing within your lot. Knowing your lot is a, is, is a key thing in this truth, man. Because if you don't know your lot, you it's easy it's easy to um, to go off and uh, actually follow the truth. Like a lot of these guys who came up against the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Okay, like uh uh. uh Alize, the girl of Hebrew, he didn't know his lot. He didn't understand that the apostles and the the apostles of Great Millstone and the elders were above him. So by not understanding and knowing his lot, what did he do? He came up against the apostles and the elders with that pride, and now he fell to truth. A while ago, but he, he's out to truth. And he thinks he's still in the truth. 
The Most High actually has him so mangled up in the mind that this man still thinks he's in the truth and 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 uh, and, uh, and still doing the will of the Lord when he's not at all. Showing you how bad, man. The Most High is a bad dude, man. It's a bad man. It's nothing to play around with. All right. Uh, Paul also spoke about uh, uh, roughly paraphrasing. Uh, basically saying not to make me too rich that I may forget you, forget thy name, and not to make me too poor that I may curse thy name, but keep me in the middle. You know? He also said I know how to be abased when I'm abound, and I know how to be abound when, I, uh, when I'm abased. Basically keeping himself in that middle. Understanding his lot. Balancing himself. Okay, but when, because when you understand your lot, then you can really balance yourself. Right? You, you can really stay within your lot, balance yourself, but yet still grow. That's that perfect balance. You know? So it says, uh, and that's what, that's according to the scriptures, that's what, that's, that is great gain. That's what you should be looking for. Not this, not, 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 not this money that the world flashes at you, man. But like I said, money is a help. It's a defense. But that's all it is, man. Get yourself a job. Make yourself money to what? Pay your bills. Get your daily bread. Now, now don't don't make so much. Don't try to make so much money so you can go travel the world when you're supposed to be doing the work. Okay, going on all these trips. You know, taking time off from the work. Guess what? In the end of the day, that's what you put on this earth to do. Those of us that are the whole full elect is to do the work of the of the of the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. It says, but godliness with content is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's true, you came to this world naked with nothing. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And that's it, man. That's plain to the point. You think Kenny Lamar's going to be able to take that fur coat he's wearing with him to, to, to the kingdom? You think he can take this fur coat to the kingdom? Or these dreads, these braids to the kingdom? Or the million dollar car he has? Or the million million dollar house he has? Come on, man. This, 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 you, once you understand that money ain't shit, man, you, 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 really, you, really, you really don't care to look the nicest all the time. You, and you're in a state, when you get deep in this truth, man, you don't care to look nice every single day. You know, you, 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 you don't get me wrong, you know, like, you don't try, you don't go out your way to make yourself look like a bum, but you wear your clothes, you wear pants to cover your your legs, you wear a, a t-shirt to cover your back, you know, shoes to cover your feet with some socks, that's it, you get out and just do your thing. You might have occasions where you wear something nice because you're going to the movies, you know, you're on that date with, with the woman or whatever, but that's not an everyday thing. Like, these guys are, 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 by far, they can't they can't go out without wearing a five hundred dollar pair of sneakers. Five hundred dollars is my like rent. That's insane. That shows you that they have. It's not. It's, I'm gonna read it. I'm I'm getting a little ahead, but I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna get to my point. It says, "For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry. Uh, it is certain we carry. We can carry nothing out." And having food and raiment, 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 let us be there with content. That's that daily bread I was just talking about. Okay? Uh, pants to cover your, your legs, shoes to cover your feet, and a shirt to cover your back. That's it. You don't always have to be wearing that $200 shirt with the $500 pair of jeans and the $500 pair of shoes, and yet you're out here in the ghettos. You have bills to be paid. Mouth to feeds, and you're and you're spending all your money, your work money on 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 nonsense. That's a childlike mind state, man. It says here, uh, first two, uh, says uh, verse nine. But they that will be rich fall into temptation, and a snare, which the word snare means a trap, which is all Esau Esau is doing when he picks up these jakes in the ghettos, man. He looks at the jake that he can trap. Put, toss that money in his face. Let him let him live a little excitement in his life for a year or two with all that money. Show him what it's like to live with millions of dollars in your bank account. And that's how you set that trap. Because Jake, being wicked and being void of the knowledge of the Most High, you help Hashem Yahushai. That temptation comes easy to him. 
Okay, but if you see if you guys if these if these two thirds would listen not the two well yeah the two third to two thirds because the only ones who are not going to listen if they would listen to the men of the Lord and build their spirit up that temptation wouldn't come so easy to them and they wouldn't fall to it. But because they 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 forbear the word of the Lord Yahweh Hashem through uh, through his prophets, guess what? That money is a trap unto them. The temptation is a snare unto them, and it says, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Hey, man, these, whew, these scriptures, man, they cut, they cut. It says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the this is my point right here. For the love of money is the root of all evil. See, yet uh, people will say. I remember hearing. I just finished hearing Apostle Dahar say this. That people will say uh, money is the root of all evil. No, it is for the love of money, which means too much, the abundance, the 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 the, the feeling of wanting more and more and more and more and more. Okay, which is out of balance. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money itself. Money is the scripture speaking about money being a defense. You know, you come into it. Let's say the like, apostle Hall used the perfect example. He said, let's say you have a good job and you get paid, you know, quite a few months, quite quite, quite a few dollars, you make quite a few uh, uh, dollars. You know, that's your money. But if a brother comes into a situation where his car broke down, whatever, and you have that extra money and the brother is just getting by, you're supposed to help that brother out fix his, fi to fix his car. You have, you have that extra money for a reason. The Most High didn't give you extra money just so you can sit on it. Right? You have it for a reason. Okay? You're, 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 the money you have can answer the praise of the next brother. You can bless the next brother. Because it's, 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 it's all about the brotherhood, right? Helping the brotherhood out. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covenant after, they have erred from the faith, which is the faith is what we're doing, beginning with the apostles and Nels of Great Millstone on down. Okay, going out there on the highways and byways, breaking down the truth, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, Going out there week in and week out, in season, out of season, the winter, the summer, the fall, the rain, the windy, you know, being consistent, making videos, pushing this truth, man, flooding, flooding the YouTube. That's the faith. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows, which is true, man. Like, you see a lot of these guys, they'll be rich and famous for five plus years. And and then the, and then all of a sudden they're coming out speaking against the music industry, speaking speaking against um, so-called white man, and then and then bringing out truth about what the real what the music industry is really about, the homosexuality that happens in there, and all that stuff. Look at Tupac before he died. You know when he came out with uh, when he came off all that information about what's really happening in the music industry. That happens to all these jakes, man. They'll be rich and famous for a couple of years, but then the, this this exact scripture happens. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with, through with many sorrows. And then they come to realize, man, all that shit I did, all the nonsense and the faganism that I did for the money that I have, was, it, it, it wasn't worth it. But by then, by then it's too late because they already sold their souls. You see? I'm gonna skip down to here. Um, I'm gonna skip down to uh, verse 17 here. It says, "Charge them that are rich in this world that they be they be not high-minded, because that's what money will do to you, man. It'll get you, make you proud, like Nate. That they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches." <laughs> oh my goodness. Why is the money in this world uncertain? Because it's not backed by anything, man. The Amer America hasn't hasn't been any. There's no gold backing up the dollar you're using, man. 
The currency that we're in is called a fiat currency, which means let it be. That word fiat is Latin phrase, which means let it be. Okay? You got the uh, 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 credit, credit cards. The word credit comes from the word credo, which means I believe. Because you really don't have cash in your freaking credit card. You just believe it's in there. And if you believe right, you know, you, you, you're able to spend that money. That so-called money. You can't go to the bank with a $20 bill and exchange it for, for uh, a pound of gold or whatever it's worth. You can't do that because there is no gold backing up your dollar. And it has been since the 19, I think 1913. So that's, it says, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, man. Because as soon as Esau says this dollar is done away with, that's it. You're going to be burning it to get to stay warm. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. Heck, these elites already burn their money, already burn the money because it's just paper. It doesn't mean anything. They can all just reprint themselves or type themselves in the amount of money they need. But in the living, but but in the living power who gives us richly, uh, giving us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works. So yeah, be rich, but rather in good works, not uncertain riches. Be rich in good works, man. And again, being rich in good works, good works is doing what the what we're doing here at Great Millstone, the whole four Rex, beginning with the apostles and the elders on down. Doing the work, man. Look at, man, go on Apostle Gabar or Apostle Tahar or Apostle Rama or any of the apostles, Apostle Bukhar and the elders. Look on, go on their pages and look how many videos they have for that account. And you all know, we all know that most of the accounts that the apostles and the elders have are not their first account. I just looked, I remember looking on Apostle Gabar's account, Walk and Talk 8. That man has almost a thousand videos on that account alone. And I know that's not his only account, or his first account. So you include all the works they've done so far, man. That's real riches. So that they do good, that they be rich in good works. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. Oh man, man, these scriptures are the scriptures are beautiful. Because you, people look at us when we're out there in the harbors and bowers and they think, well, they, they look give you that look like, man, what you're doing means like what's the benefit of what you're doing? We do what we do, we go out there and preach and do the work of the Lord so that we might be saved, that we have a hope of being saved. Us and our families, man. That's that laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. Cause guess what? There's a time of there's a time of reckoning coming, and 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 the only way to to uh, or the best way to uh, to 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 uh, seal your salvation is to do this work in truth and sincerity, man. Rightly dividing the word of, of truth, being out there in the highways and bodies, man. Break down the scriptures, making videos. And among lots of things, man, other things, but that is that is how you lay up a good foundation against the time to come. Hence Isaiah 33 and 6. Wisdom and knowledge should be the stabilities of that time. If you are um let's say you're rich. Okay, you're rich, you have all this abundance of food, um uh, uh property. And so on and so on. And there's a big crisis that happens. If you were saving your food and all on all your riches beforehand, basically, the, as like the old saying goes, putting some money away for a rainy day. Well, guess what? We're putting our riches away right now for a rainy day. That's what this is. Except for that day is going to rain with fire and nuclear missiles, man. That they may lay hold on eternal life. Forever, man, because the $100 bill is not going to give you eternal life. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? That's not gonna. You can't. Yahushua is gonna find you with the elect, and you can't flash money in his face and say, "Listen, please don't kill me. I'll give you all this money." Are you serious? Like the most High is in need of that money. It says, "O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain, vain babbling." And oppositions of science falsely so called, which you know that goes into something that another, another thing too, um, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be to with grace be with thee, amen. So, you know, that's it on that, man. Um, 